Okay. Um, welcome, uh, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, this is the first of a six-part training series we're doing with the Canadian Journalism Foundation. My name is Colleen Kimmett, and I'm the teaching fellow for the Google News Lab in Canada. Uh, as I mentioned, the session is being recorded and will be linked to on the uh, CJF website. I will pause periodically to respond to questions to see if there are any questions. Um, if you've got a question, you can put it in the chat as I go and I'll make sure that I get to it. The News Lab is part of the Google News Initiative. Uh, so this link here is, is the GNI website where you can find training modules that cover the topics I'll be talking about today and more. A bit about the Google News Initiative. Uh, since it launched in 2018, uh, it supported more than uh, 6,700 news partners in countries around the world. Um, and provided uh, $300 million in global funding for various fellowships, funds, uh, initiatives, and for the Google News Lab program and trainings. There are three overarching themes or goals with the News Lab trainings, uh, and we offer certification for each of these on each of these themes. So, I'm kind of offering small uh, modules that fit into one of these three themes. Um, at the end of this training, I'll bring up a slide with a link to a form where you can give feedback on the session, but also request a certificate. Today, we're going to talk about, uh, first of all, Google search operators, how to use Google search operators to, to fine tune your searches and get more directly to what you're looking for. Um, then I'm going to talk about uh, image searches and video searches, so verifying where images and, and videos come from. And then I'll uh, go through a few specialized search tools, um, particularly within a Canadian context. So the first thing I want to talk about are Google search operators. So these are commands um, that tell the search engine to search for your keyword or phrases in specific ways. So within a certain file type only, within certain parts of a website only, uh, within relation to other search words or terms. Some of these, many of these you're probably familiar with. Um, some may be new to you. I'll run through uh, a few examples of how you can use these, especially in, in combination with one another, um, but also apply them to specific reporting cases. So the first one I want to talk about is the site search operator. This is a really useful one that allows you to search for keywords or phrases within a specific website um, or a domain. So in this example, I'm searching for my name as an exact phrase within a, a domain, the UK, or within a specific website, the tie.ca. So this is a website that um, I used to write for. So let's look at how this works in, in real time. For example, um, let's say, um, looking at the domain, for example, so searching a specific domain only. Look at the difference between, let's say I'm searching for volunteer opportunities in Kenya. If I search volunteer Kenya, I get, um, first of all, uh, the types of websites that tend to be listicles. Um, sometimes I get ads at the top you know, eight best volunteer opportunities, um, more general websites that are kind of amalgamating and listing information off the web. If I search for volunteer and site KE, so this is the Kenyan domain, you can see I'm going getting results that are specific Kenyan-based organizations um, that have a volunteer section somewhere on their website. 
often searching um, uh, with when you search a domain, um, it's about finding obviously information specific to that country's domain as opposed to generally. So this can be useful as well if you're searching a topic. Um, I'm going to use this example. This is uh, Obigo Guzman, Mexican former drug lord. If I do a general search for his name, I get a Wikipedia site. If I do search within Mexican domains, I'm getting sites from um, Mexican news sources, for example. So just doing this sort of uh, picking a search term and searching the term alone versus searching a, for, from a specific domain is a kind of interesting exercise for students to see how the site search works. And you can note that um, in this example, I can put a dot here or not. And it's the same with the site if I'm looking at a specific website. I can include the www or https or not. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that the s is lowercase. So I can choose to put my search operator at the beginning like this. I'll get the same results, but I need to ensure that that s is lowercase. Often using uh, the site search operator is a more uh, effective way of searching than using um, a site's own search function. So for example, um, if we look at, so this is a homepage for a, a company, the Northwest Company. If I search here up in the top right for climate change, this is a company that I know serves communities in the far north. So I'm interested in what they have to say about climate change, how they're dealing with climate change. If I search uh, the site here, I can see I am getting some results related to uh, climate related risks. But I'm also getting results that just include the word change. So obviously this search function on the website um, is not able to capture an exact phrase. If I take this URL and copy it, I'll go back to Google and search site, and then my keyword or phrase, I'm getting results from northwest.ca that have this exact phrase. This is a, I can do kind of more refined searches as well. For example, here we're looking at the city of Hamilton's um, portal for, it's taking a minute to load here, sorry. Um, looking at the city of Hamilton's portal for publishing city council meeting minutes. I might have to come back to this one if it's loading too slow. So you can see here in the URL, it's redirected me to um, a eScribe meeting portal. So this is the means by which they upload PDFs of city council meeting minutes. So I'm gonna copy this URL here I'll refine my search. I'll change my search here. I'm going to put the URL after site. And then I can put my keyword, for example, uh, sewage. So here I have a list of results from uh, Hamilton's meeting publication portal that contain the word sewage. You know, I think when we're training student journalists, when I was a student journalist, the emphasis is, is on finding um, primary sources. So finding uh, reports from the source. Using this site search function with your keywords can be uh, a really useful way to find um, quickly without sorting through a website's sometimes ineffective search function. 
um, keywords related to the, the reporting topic you're interested in. You can also search multiple sites at once. So for example, I could execute a search like this. Let's say I want to find uh, more information on a person. I want to find wherever they appear on all of their social media profiles. So here I'm just searching my name in exact quotes. And then in brackets, I'm searching facebook.com, twitter.com, and linkedin.com for my name. This straight up and down sign, that's just is another way of saying or. And if I execute this search, you can see a relatively small number of results, but each of these is uh, where my name appears on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. You can also use a minus sign to leave out results from a particular website. So sometimes this happens where you're searching for something and your first like dozen results are from a site you're not interested in. Um, so if I look at, let's take the first result here, maybe I had some, this often happens with Amazon or sometimes Pinterest um, or a, a, not another company that's advertising. So if I take this URL, www.thepioneerwoman.com, I can add a minus sign in front of my site search. And now you'll see my first results, my results exclude results from that specific website. You can also combine the site search operator with an in-URL search operator to search for uh, keywords or terms targeting specific indexed sections of a website. So you can use this to look for financial reporting documents that companies might, might publish on their website under a certain section or news releases that a city publishes on its news release section or say meeting transcripts from a legislative body. So this allows me to tell Google to search for results from a site, but within a specific indexed section of a site as well. So in this example, I'm searching Facebook, um, but I'm searching only groups within Facebook for a lot, this is live action role playing. Let's say I'm interested in finding groups on a certain topic. And I'll do a live example of this as well. Um, but because I know that every group on Facebook is, includes the word groups in the URL, I can take that clue and use it to search for just that section of the website. So again, looking at you know student assignments, um, we want students to learn how to find sources, right? People directly affected by or advocating for a certain topic. Um, Facebook can be a great way to find those sources. Um, so let's say I'm interested in you know parents of children with ADHD in Toronto. So these are my keywords. I'm telling Google to return results only with groups in the URL from facebook.com. And I wanna point out too that note, there's no space here between the, the colon following the search operator and the, and the site or the URL. So here, um, each of these results is a group on Facebook 
with uh, ADHD with these keywords somewhere in the title or the description of the group. This can work for Twitter as well. And I'll show you some other examples, but um, Twitter lists are places where anyone can create a public list on Twitter of people tweeting about certain topics. Again, a good place to find sources. So if I'm looking for a BIPOC scientist, perhaps, I can use these search terms, searching twitter.com, but only within pages that are indexed as a list. And here we have a number of results. This still obviously takes some clicking through to see if these are you know, useful. But if I click on this link, um, I see some options here, a list of BIPOC invert scientists, and here I've got a member list, potential sources, experts I could reach out to or comment on a particular topic. Um, I can also do, for example, um, searching for on, on a city website. This is another good use for finding information on a city, a municipal website. Um, so I'm going to go to the city of Campbell River. And I can see here on the web page, they've got a what's new section. This is where they post news releases, public information. If I click on one of these news releases, let's look at more. I can see within the URL, I've got the word news here. So I can, I know that, uh, you know, clicking through a few of the news releases and I'm looking up here at the top in the, in the URL bar, um, after clicking through a few of these news releases, I notice that each one has news in the URL. It's indexed under the news section of the website. So I'm gonna take that I'll go back to Google, and then now I'm searching for site campbellriver.ca in URL news, and then again, my keyword, whatever topic I'm interested in. And here I have a relatively small number of results, but each of these is a web page that's been indexed as news on campbellriver.ca that has sewage either in the headline or in the body. Are there any questions so far? Maybe I'll just pause and see see if anyone has questions or as well I'll add anything you might like to add if you've got any tips of your own on any of these search operators so far. Okay, um, let's move on. So the next one I want to look at, the next search operator I want to look at is a file type search operator. Um, so I say here file type to search for reports, memos, or letters. This is using file type PDF. This I find to be often a, a very, for journalists, a very useful file type to search for. So here I'm looking for Walgreens Financial Statement 2023 and I've added file type PDF to restrict my results to uh, only results that are, in, that are in PDF format. So um, if we look at a live example here, with something like that one, Walgreens Financial Report 2022, let's say, um, sometimes 
I can get there with just a general search like this without adding a file type uh, search operator. So if we look at this result, it is a press release from Walgreens about the um, about the release of this report. And I'm sure if I you know scrolled all the way down or searched this web page somewhere, I would find a link to the actual report itself. Um, if I add a file type search operator here, so in this case, this is my search operator file type, and I want to look for PDFs specifically, you can see the first, well, I might not, this looks like an annual reports.com. I don't know that website. Maybe I don't trust it, but my second result here is a PDF of the actual document. So I can see I've got the little blurb that the description that was in the press release, um, but then the document goes on to actually provide details. This is, this is the actual detailed report. Um, I've done this before with my name. If you, if you're a journalist with published, lots of published clips, um, it's interesting to search your own name with file type PDF to see examples of where different newsletters or organizations, um, sometimes even, uh, policy papers or academic articles have mentioned your name or mentioned your work. Uh, I've done this as well with um, uh, politicians. So searching a politician's name. Um, I did this with a group of Alberta journalists. Uh, we to, This was a former Minister of Health for Alberta, Tyler Shandro. So I searched his name in exact quotations. And for those of you who don't know, by the way, putting a, a, a name or a phrase in quotes like this means that Google will return results with these letters in this order. If I don't use quotes, I might get results that include Tyler, but not Shandro, or Shandro, but not Tyler. So here I'm searching the name of a politician or former politician along with file type PDF. And this was interesting because we got a number of results that were, for example, um, uh, uh, here's a disclosure statement, but also, um, you know, this is a letters, open letters that were written to um, Minister Shandro. So this can be another exercise for students if they are researching um, a person or an organization is to try a search um, with a file type PDF to see what kinds of documents might come up. The file type search operator also works with other types of files. So um, it, not every type of file, but XLS, for example, PowerPoints. Um, so I could also use it to look not for you know reports, memos, letters, but data. For example, um, here, I'm going to take this out of quotes, Winnipeg, homeless shelters. I'm going to change this to XLS. And here I've got results uh, that include my search terms, Winnipeg homeless shelters, but all of them are in an XLS file type. Um, or uh, PowerPoints, for example. Um, and I'm going to do a, another combination search operator here. I'll go back to my home page. So here, these are my search terms, First Nations, infrastructure, water, sort of flipped around in the order. Um, but I'm searching the uh, federal government website, domain.gc.ca. Um, I might have to change this to Canada.ca. We'll see. We'll try this search. Um, but I'm searching uh, PowerPoint file types. And here I have a few results um, meeting those criteria. 
So these search operators for students, especially you know students who are coming to journalism without an established beat or an established sources, requires a lot of research. Um, these search operators can be used to to target specific types of research. For so there's a question um, for those in Canada: How do we access natural language search via Bard? Um, even VPN and Google accounts created in the U.S. seem to hit the geofence. Um, short answer, Salim, is I don't know. Um, I don't have information on um, when BARD is, come, is, is going to become accessible in Canada. I'm sorry. Um, another kind of interesting... Um, search trick, and this is a bit of a wild card that the uh, Australian teaching fellow um, showed me, was um, searching like this. So um, private and confidential. So this is an exact phrase, file type PDF, and then an organization, a ministry that you might be interested in. And we did this uh, experiment with a group of Alberta journalists and found some results that, um, you know, were potentially things, um, here's a report as uh, strictly private and confidential. So using the file type PDF and this exact phrase, private and confidential, can be a way to potentially unearth something that um, maybe it's not supposed to be public. I can't say if that's the case with this report. Maybe it's been made public, but sort of an interesting wildcard search using search operators. In title, this is a search operator that allows you to search for keywords within page titles or you know, in other words, the H1, that would be coded H1. Sometimes the differences are not that big. So using the in title search operator versus not, but sometimes they can get you to a list of useful results with fewer click throughs. So for example, here I'm searching for Lafarge. Um, I've put purchase agreement after the in title search operator so this is getting me two results that have obviously purchase agreement in the title. Uh, I did this with, here's another example, um, you know, journalism scholarships, Canada. Let's so here we've got a lot of results, kind of a summary of different scholarships available at which universities, and then uh, lists to kind of general information website uh, websites or websites with general information about scholarships. Again, some kind of roundup or listicle type sites. Um, if I put scholarship. move this over so it's not captured in the title but if I put scholarship in the title and then my search terms journalism Canada I get some of the same results but also more specific so because each of these results have has scholarship singular in the title each of them is referring to a unique type of scholarship Around X, this is kind of an interesting um, search operator that allows you to search for exact phrases or keywords by proximity. So um, in this case, let me grab an example for you. In this case, I'm searching for um, uh, the exact phrase John Tory. 
former mayor of Toronto. Ms. Rahi is the name of a development company. This is my search operator. The number in brackets here can be any number you choose. Um, but what this is telling Google is, show me results where this keyword or phrase, John Tory, appears within five words of this search term or phrase. So it's a way of getting at, you know, show me results where these two things appear in the same sentence, for example, or the same paragraph. So here we have, again, relatively small number of results, just nine results. But here we have, uh, this is, uh, these are all pertaining to um, John Tory appearing at a ribbon cutting for this company. So you could think about this in terms of close associations. And this number, you know, it could be like 10, it could be 100. Um, but the smaller the number, um, you know, is you're getting at, I want to see results where these two things appear uh, not just on the same page, um, on the same website, but within the same sentence or paragraph. Um, maybe I'll just pause there for a moment and see if there are um, any questions, any questions so far, or comments. Okay, I'll jump back in and I want to um, shift gears a little bit and get at the uh, image searching. Um, oops, sorry, I think we've got my speaker notes here. So um, just a couple tips for searching, search using image search. And this is not, I'm getting to reverse image search, but I wanna show you just searching Google for keywords and finding images related to those keywords. So in this example, and it's a bit cut off here, so I'll do it live as well. Um, but this is useful for anyone who's helping students actually produce a news site or a publication where you need to come up with headlines and photos, et cetera. Um, so tip one, if you're looking for an image, um, I didn't know this, but you can add um, colors. So Celine Dion, red and white will return results where my images have those particular colors. Or, and perhaps more, more relevant to the example I just mentioned, you're producing a publication, you need images. Um, let's say something major happened in Gravelberg, Saskatchewan. I don't have any reporters there on the ground. I can't send somebody there. I enter my search term in Google. I can click images here. So this is returning results of, of images only. I'm gonna zoom out a bit and here, um, on the right, I've got a tools button. If I click that and then click below under usage rights, I can select for Creative Commons licenses. So this doesn't necessarily mean that the image is free to use, but often it is free to use. So just to recap, I've entered my search term. I want images of Gravelberg, clicked images here. And under tools, I've selected Creative Commons licenses. From here, you can see, okay, this image is licensable. I'll click. I get a little pop-up on the side where I can view license details. And this gives me information about, can I use this? So here, um, I'm free to share it. I'm free to use it even for commercial uses. Uh, as long as I give proper attribution.
And each of these results has, uh, if I click here, for example, each of these results has information about the license details, how I can use it and what's required to use it. But again, using the, the, the keyword search plus images plus Creative Commons licenses, um, a good way to find free to use images on the web. And then you can also search Google by image. So instead of searching by keyword, I can search Google um, using an image. So just from the regular Google search page, if I click on this little camera icon here, I can search any image. So Google Lens is the technology used to, to search images. I've got the option to paste an image link or upload a, a file. So we see this a lot in um, fact checking. So all of these clips are from AFP Canada. AFP is Agence France Presse. They have a fact checking department and they operate in all around the world. Um, in I would say nine out of 10 of the stories they debunk, um, they're using reverse image searches. So all this requires, like I said, is a, is a, um, uh, as is an image link um, or a file. So I'm going to show you an example, a real life example from um, this originally appeared back in 2008 um, and then kind of resurfaced in the winter of 2001. It was this image of a plane on a rural runway that was shared across social media with captions similar to this, um, you know, uh, implying like a government secrecy. Some of them referenced migrants, um, sort of malfeasance, mysterious. Um, so I directly on Twitter or wherever it appears, um, I would right click on this image. This dialog pop box pops up. I can copy image address and then paste that URL, the image you address URL here. And I get a page that looks like this. So this is Google's image search. This is Google Lens. Sometimes, depending on the image, um, what appears directly on the right are, are visually similar images. So I might get traffic, or in this case, you know, random airplanes. If it's a crowd of people, I might get images that are crowds, but not my image. Um, so sometimes these results are not that useful. Um, because this has been fact-checked already, I see two links here. So maintenance check sparks conspiracy from Canadian Aviator, and I can see this is an exact matching image. And here in the second row, I've got AFP.com. That's the site I just mentioned. Um, a fact-checking site I know. I can see it's this exact image. Um, if you don't get any really useful results or specific results or exact matching image results here, uh, click above on Find Image Source, and that will take you to uh, exact matching images. Now, like I said, this has already been um, fact-checked. So it takes me to, it takes me to this article here of the fact-check. Labeled false and goes on to explain that this was um, a photo from a salt wire uh, that uh, is a short story about a UN plane stopping for routine maintenance in Newfoundland. Um, I see, I'm just going to pause because I see we've got a question here. Um, please be sure to mention copyright. Images can't just be copied and used um, from anywhere online. Yeah, certainly. And with the creative, the point of checking the Creative Commons licensing is to see the, you know, what 
uh, require uh, people have posted these photos, but with specific uh, onto Creative Commons um, to make them available, but they get to determine, the poster gets to determine, can they be used for commercial purposes or can they be used um, you know, only for non-commercial purposes? Can they be altered? Um, can they be used without attribution or do they require fair attribution? Yeah, thanks, Carrie. And then another uh, question here, when it comes to images, can you touch on fair dealing in Canada? Um, I, I'm not sure what, um, what you mean by that. Um, if you want to put more specifics in the chat, you can, or, or you can follow up with me in a direct message or, um, uh, or afterward. But I suspect maybe your, the, the fair dealing would have to do with copyright uh, rules that would be addressed in uh, Creative Commons licensing. Um, so what about videos? This is uh, an example of a video that was going around social media uh, earlier this year. Um, this is supposedly drone footage from the Trudeau Must Go protest outside of CTV offices in Ottawa. Now, to you know, someone looking at this critically, even without doing an image search or a keyframe search in this case, as I'll show you, uh, you can look for clues. Um, you know, this does not look like a Canadian flag. Uh, if you know a little bit about Ottawa, that does not look like Ottawa. That's also really a lot of people. Um, so I think all that goes to say is that I think it's you know useful to convey to students that you know use your critical thinking skills even before you um, even before you need to do an image search or a keyframe search. Um, but that said, let's look at this example um, as a way to um, deal with videos. Has this video appeared somewhere on the web before? Um, so basically what you need to check a video is a, a keyframe. That can be a screenshot, so simply taking a screenshot of the video. Um, you can also use a tool um, specifically made to grab keyframes. So this is um, Invid. This is a tool designed for image and video verification. It's a free of cost plugin that works on Chrome. Um, I've got it here. So here, um, this is kind of the, the homepage of Invid. You can see it's up all kinds of tools here. Um, so if I go to the source of that video, um, and then again, just simply right clicking on the Twitter video, copying the URL, this takes a while to process sometimes or a couple minutes, which is a long time in a live session. So I've done it already. But here it's broken down my video into keyframes. So I could take any one of these and um, copy the image address, or I can even do um, a direct image search from Google. So you can see here popping up on the right. It's hard to see. You can't always see my dialog box, but essentially what I've just done there is right-clicked on one of those keyframes selected search with Google. Um, you can see this page is familiar, find image source, and I can look at any one of these to see its people rallying in Spain. There are other, like I said, you can also simply do a screenshot of a video, um, and there are other tools that work for specific um, platforms. Um, for example, um, I won't demo these, but I'll just show you uh, watchframeframe.com 
is a way to grab keyframes or watch in slow motion videos from Vimeo or YouTube. Um, and Amnesty International has a YouTube data viewer that allows you to see metadata um, and also extract keyframes uh, from a YouTube video. Um, are there any, any questions about that? Any other questions about that? I see just further to um, Google account admin in regards to the use of images for the purpose of news and journalism, um, not infringing copyright. Yes, uh, certainly with any image you publish, you want to make sure you have permission to do so. Um, so if you, again, that's, you know, image search uh, can really be useful. Um, in finding if you if that image is not sourced, if you just stumble across an image and you want to find out where it came from, um, you can use a Google image to search to see where else has this image appeared on the web in order to hopefully find a web page that has information about who took it, who owns copyright. I'll show you also just quickly um, another tool in InVid is in, it has image analysis tools. So for example, in this case, um, I'm going to close this. I, again, I already uploaded this image, um, but this is an image um, that was just taken on the street of, of, uh, of my city of Montreal. But with the magnifier here, again, if I want to verify an image, where is this image from? Is it of what the caption says it is? Um, I could use the magnifier tool to search for clues. So here I can, for example, I'm zooming in on this parking sign. Um, I could see, you know, maybe get details. This is pretty clear, but I could get details on a street sign. And this is a really fun activity to do with students is to essentially give them an image from somewhere either that you take yourself um, or that you you know uh, you know get from a friend or find from elsewhere and ask them to try and figure out where where was this image taken um, so in this case you know we could do a couple of things we could search for the street name so let's look at the sign again Well, already I can see it's a French street sign, so that can be, gives me clues that it's in Montreal. I can see the 514 area code. I can see, again, a street sign indicating, you know, lundi à vendredi. Um, I can search for the street sign. I can get, um, here's a Facebook page for this business. From here, I could take this address go into Google Maps. Oops, I got the wrong. And then here, um, if you haven't done this before, browse Street View. On the right-hand side, at the lower right-hand corner, I've got this little yellow guy. I can click and hold and drag to anywhere on my map to get a street view. And then from here, you know, it's a little hard, but there's traffic in the way. But again, I can search for clues to determine, um, you know, where was this taken? Can look for landmarks, um, et cetera. There's a good, I'll drop this in the chat. Um, there is a, a fun, um, let me see if I can find it. There's the, uh, uh, what's it called? First Draft News is a, an organization dedicated to fact checking and misinformation. Um, and they've got a good a verification challenge. Um, this is just a guide from First Draft. Um, let me see if I can find the verification challenge. 
but this is a fun game to play with students um, where they actually provide an image um, using Google Images and Google Maps to find out um, where an image was taken. I won't go through this, but I'll just pop the link in the chat if you want to check that out. Um, and I'll get into more details on this kind of uh, fact-checking and tackling misinformation in that session. Um, now, before we wrap up, I just want to run through a couple of um, more, I guess, niche or specialized search tools that um, might be useful for your students as they are doing their research and reporting. Um, the first is the way back, the Internet Archive. So this is a nonprofit um, that started in 1996, and basically it, it archives the Internet itself. Um, so you, many of you might have be familiar with the um, Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. So if I, for example, enter, um, I'll do the CJF website, enter this URL into the Wayback Machine, I see uh, essentially a, a calendar of how many times the Internet Archive archived this web page between November uh, 2004 and August 2023. So I can click on a year and then go to the calendar, click on a snapshot and see a, a snapshot of how the page appeared uh, in, in February 2004. So the Wayback Machine, that's a, a really um, useful, well-known function of the Internet Archive. Um, you know, you want to see changes to a website over time. You want to see information maybe from a site, a company site, a government site that was later removed. It also works for, um, to a certain extent, works for tweets as well. And I see in lots of fact, AFP fact-checking stories doing, looking for tweet archives. So twitter.com user profile name, I'll zoom in a bit, and then status, I might need to do www here, let's try. So this is just my profile on Twitter, followed by status. I'll enter that URL into the search bar. This looks like an error, but it's not. If I click here, I can see 93 tweets that have been archived in the Wayback Machine. So AFP, for example, has used this to um, determine, uh, to, to find tweets that had been previously deleted by a, a Twitter user, but were before they were deleted, were saved in the Internet Archive. So there's the tweet from November 5th, 2019. This isn't, doesn't necessarily capture every tweet. Um, the Internet Archives crawlers you know, go periodically, but um, in my case, and I'm not a big tweeter, I got 91 tweets. Um, openparliament.ca. Openparliament.ca, this is a volunteer sort of spare time effort by um, um, a, uh, I can't remember the person's name, but essentially it's a search program for a search site for Hansard. Um, when it was started, it was much hard, harder to search Hansard, the Hansard records, um, but it's still a useful site. Um, so here, for example, go to the live site. I can find my MP. This might be an interesting exercise for students. Um, you know, see what your MP has said about a certain issue. I'll just pick one at random here. Um, but what I like about this site is that it's very easily searchable. You can search by MP name by keyword. Um, you can search by debates and committees, by bills. And if we go here, um, I'll just go to a statement that this MP made in the House. I can view a full statement. And if I scroll to the top, 
I can get to the original version. So I'm not relying on this sort of third party. Um, well, this isn't loading quite right, but I'm not, I don't need to rely just on this third party website. Um, each uh, listing links to the original version on Hansard. Um, another useful site for research, um, Canly. So this is a, um, Canley is the Canadian um, Legal Information Institute, uh, a nonprofit founded um, in 2001. So this is funded by um, um, uh, funded by lawyers and notaries who are a member of law societies in Canada, who are members of law societies in Canada, and this provides access to judicial decisions. Um, across all Canadian jurisdictions. So I can search by keywords again, and let me go to the live site. I could search by key, key terms, maybe interested in, you know, starting with something really broad, hate crimes, and then you can narrow down by jurisdiction, by relevance, so newest, for example, I've also done searches um, that are just the, you know, province of Ontario. Change this one to Ontario. So these uh, many, when I add, do this search term, V province Ontario, province of Alberta, this takes me to cases that people have brought against the, the province or federal government. And also, of course, if you've got a case name uh, or number, you can use that as well. And um, finally, this is uh, nativeland.ca, and I'll go to the live site as well. Uh, so this is a Canadian not-for-profit organization. Um, it's Indigenous-led, and it essentially is a mapping tool that allows you to see um, native languages, territories, and treaties anywhere in the world. Um, they offer this disclaimer, as you can see, you know, please check with a nation um, before you cite this. But for example, if I type in Montreal where I am, I can zoom in and see, in this case, I've got territories checked. I can look at treaties I can look at languages of wherever I am and I'll, I'll point it to under the territory section they provide um, contact local information for local nations to verify the information so that's nativeland.ca, interesting site. Um, I'll just pause for questions to see any other questions I've got. Um, does Google search have a feature or one forthcoming for AI generated text or image detection? Um, I am, am not aware of that, but um, so I, I can't answer that, but thank you. Thanks for the question. Any other questions or comments? I'm just going to bring up um, my final slide here. Um, so you'll see here, this is a link where you can uh, provide feedback um, and also get a certification. So I mentioned that the, I'm gonna drop this link in the chat as well. The certifications don't exactly, um, they're, they're grouped under these three themes. So there's three certifications you can receive um, under, this would be, uh, you can, you'll see how the form looks, but um, you, you, you won't be certified for student newsrooms essential. This is just sort of a smaller module within um, a reporting skills certification. But um, you can receive a certification at that link. Um, there's also my Twitter information and my email. If you have any questions, um, comments, 
I would love to hear from you. As I mentioned, this uh, is being recorded. I'm going to share this recording um, so that it can be uh, accessible on the CJF website. Um, and I want to thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I uh, thank you for your good questions. And I hope to see you at um, future sessions. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Colleen. It was very helpful. Great.